prayer. It's the second of the nine arts of spiritual conversations that we're looking at. But who am I to talk about prayer? I'm definitely not the world's greatest prayer, even though I know the huge difference it makes. And as I look back over my life, I just don't seem to be that con consistent about it. So I'm here talking about prayer as someone who struggles with it just as much as probably a lot of you do who are watching. So with that confession in mind, let's remember that it's the God we are praying to who is the one able to make all the difference in the lives of those that we're noticing and wanting to bring into his kingdom. When we pray, three important things happen. We demonstrate our dependence on God. The hearts of those we are praying for are softened and people are drawn to Jesus. I can't win them over with my supposedly brilliant arguments. And if I try to convince them of their sin, I'm more likely to repulse them than attract them. But God is already at work and he has promised that his Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. And Jesus said that his Father will draw people to him. So our prayers link us in to that process that's already going on. God already wants to have all people as part of his family. And he's inviting us to join in that process of bringing them in. And prayer is one of the great ways we do so. Whether it's family, friends, colleagues, neighbours or someone else we've noticed, before we talk to them about God, we need to talk to God about them then we can join in with what God is already doing in their lives. There's a guy in my core who says that he only prays once a day and he tells anyone who'll listen that that prayer starts when he gets up in the morning and it only finishes when he goes to sleep at night. Making our prayer just as natural as the ongoing conversation with God that he has is really going to help in any of our witness sign and evangelism. Because it's as we're constantly asking God for direction and prompts, um, bringing the people and things we notice before him, that he will tell us how to join in with what he's already doing. So perhaps in that process, there are three key questions. A where, a what, and a how. God, where are you already at work? God, what does this person need right now? And God, how can I invite this person to experience Jesus in a fresh way? Part of the adventure of God's kingdom is discovering where God is at work and joining him on his mission to reconcile people to himself. Since God is already at work all around us, we can ask him to show us where he wants us to take part in his great activity of love and grace. This kind of secret prayer can be the first step in discovering what God is up to, recognising where he's at work and joining him in it. That secret prayer approach gives us all an opportunity to experience God more and to take part in his work. It doesn't matter whether we're really outgoing or, or incredibly shy. That secret prayer allows us to find out what God is doing and then join in with it even if the people we're praying for don't realise a thing. Remember, even Jesus only did what he saw his father God doing. So we're definitely going to get on much better if we follow his example than trying to do our own thing. So remember to ask God, where are you already at work? Because when we ask him where he's already working, we get to reach out to others with God, not just for God. It's not just about knowing where God is at work, it's also about knowing what the person that God is working in needs right now. So the question, what God, what does this person need right now, is, is a really important one also. Not only does God know exactly what he's up to in each person, he knows each person's heart and exactly what she or he needs at this very moment. Psalm 139 reminds us of that when it speaks of how intimately and completely God knows us. Shockingly, it's quite probable that what the person we are praying for doesn't need right now is a 10-point lecture on the hows and wherefores of the path to salvation. 
because it's not just about our words to them, but our service, our prayers, our kindness and generosity, and our blessings to meet the here and now needs of those we're praying for, that will open their hearts and minds as we lovingly engage with them where they are now, rather than address what we think they need for the rest of eternity. We're far more likely to get a positive and open response from them when the time does come to have that deeper conversation, if we engage appropriately with what they need in the many no moments during that journey together. And then that final prayer. God, how can I invite this person to experience Jesus in a fresh way? Not just using the same old invitations that we always have done, but inviting them in ways that are uniquely appropriate to them. After all, a lot of people are, have some pretty ambivalent views about Christians and church. So we need to be open to God's leading as we understand how we can help them discover God's activity and Jesus' presence in their lives today. When you ask God these few simple questions about people, where, what and how, you get to participate in his work as he draws them to himself. And this type of intentional prayer for people who are journeying towards faith opens up the door for natural interactions that point to God. And by keeping our prayers personal, purposeful and a priority in this way, we're inviting God to use us to minister directly to others in a profound and powerful way. So here are a couple of questions to consider and a couple of things to practice. Why do you think we commonly forget to pray for someone before we start talking with them about God? Think of a time when you were moved to pray for an unbelieving family member, friend or a stranger. What caused you to start praying? And how has prayer changed the way you relate to that person? And a couple of practices. Set a challenging but attainable goal to pray for someone or some people who don't yet have a relationship with God that he has helped you notice. You might want to share the names with someone else so that they can pray alongside you and hold you accountable. And then perhaps over the next week, commit at least five minutes each day to ask those three questions about someone on your list. God, where are you already at work in this person's life? What does he or she need right now? And how can I invite this person to experience Jesus in a fresh way? And feel free to let us know your thoughts on the on these questions and also how you're getting on and what God is doing in and through your prayers. See you next week. God bless.